This is Bram from Admire with a brief demonstration about submission form configuration on Open Repository. On a normal installation of DSpace, submission forms are configured on the server side in an XML file. But in Open Repository, we've created a system where you can configure the submission forms yourself through the UI. Currently, all of the collections in this repository are using the same submission form. The place where you need to go is in the section, if you're logged in as an admin, you see all of these in the section content administration, you need to click on upload XLS input forms. This page gives you an, a number of instructions and documentation and the actual actions what you can do are shown at the bottom of the page. This is a very, very safe feature to use because we've built in rollback possibilities and backups for all of the previous submission form configurations. So even if you totally destroy your submission form configuration, you can easily get back to earlier configurations. For example, if you, you see a history of two, um, two submission forms here, but we can, we can look at even more. And we can actually see not only the successful ones, but we can also see examples of um, files that we've tried to upload, that, but that have failed. So if you look at one, the active or the current um, submission form, we can see here the details where we can download the uh, Excel file. We can download the resulting input forms.xml, which is interesting if you would want to share this with somebody who's uh, running a DSpace, not an open repository, um, and your uh, item submissions XML file for the submission steps. So you can click this uh, re-import file to reinstate an older version. You can delete this older version. So just to say that this is a, an easy an, or a safe, very safe feature. And with any change that you do to the system as an open repository client, you of course have your staging server. So um, for any change, I always highly recommend to do it on the staging server first before you do it on production, even though it's a um, safe feature to use. So let's go ahead and make some changes here. So I'm not uh, explaining this documentation all by one. You can, you can read this, but uh, I've already downloaded the current configuration and we can now apply some changes. So I'm opening my Excel file that I had already prepared or that I've downloaded and opened and played a little bit around with the zooming so that the, the zooming looks okay. The um, collection mapping, the first tab actually shows that you can have a form configuration. The form configuration here is called traditional and that this is the default applying to all collections in the repository. The second line gives a specific handle to a specific collection where instead of traditional, you could also add another name. You can invent your own form names here. You can start using them and then you just have to make sure that the other tabs at the bottom of the page that instead of page one underscore traditional, page two underscore traditional, that these are using the new, uh, the new name that you had in mind. But for our ex exercise today or for the demo, I will just be making changes to the traditional submission form. So I'm, I'm going to leave all of this in place. Uh, this is tweaks to this are not, uh, not in scope of this particular video. So when you see here, we have two pages with, uh, with metadata, the, the, the so-called describe steps. So we have page one and we have page two with a bit more fields. Let's also do some zooming here. And you can see that we have some fields here. We, we uh, allow the person, the submitter to select a type of publication. And then we have some fields, for example, issue, begin page, end page, a volume, for example, a volume of a journal title. We can clearly see that these actually only make sense when we are submitting an article that's published in a journal. So what I want to show you in this video is how you can use the type binding feature to hide 
or actually to enforce that some fields are only shown for particular types. But the first thing we need to do for this to make the submission forms aware that the selection of the type is already made is that we have to add a third description page uh, where the user first selects, selects a type. So the user first selects a type, then if the repository system knows what kind of type is selected in the second page or in the third page, we can, um, uh, we can use this information for type binding. So first of all, I'm gonna rename this one to uh, page three, because now this is gonna become page three instead of page two. I'm going to rename this one to page two instead of page one. And I'm going to duplicate, move or copy. And then we say we create a copy of this sheet. And then we move it here and we actually rename it to be called page one. So in page one, as I just told you, the only thing we want to do is the type selection. So I'm going to delete all the lines that we had here so that the only thing we have left on page one is the type selection. So DC type, somebody selects a type and in the second thing, uh, repeatable, I know in standard DSpace this is the case that actually having a type repeatable is... Um, it's an interesting discussion because instead of regarding the type of the item, you could regard this as the type of the bitstream. So you could say, I'm uploading something that was presented at a conference and I want to say that uh, the video file of the presentation as well as the PowerPoint, as well as the abstract in PDF. So that, that could create a use case why you would want to um, make this repeatable and say, I have a video, I have, uh, I have some different things, but in general, or what I see in actually most repositories, you will want to make this false uh, to enforce that actually only one type is selected. But I would invite you just try out what works for you here. Uh, but in my example, I'm gonna say that it's false, that the user can only select one type. Another thing here in the column G is that whenever you use something as an input type list, the list is governed by some value pairs that the, uh, the user can choose from. In this case, the list of value pairs is called common underscore types. And any type of list that you decide to create or that you decide to manage uh, has a name and that name needs to correspond with the tab in this spreadsheet. So I, here I have common underscore types and I find something all of these sheets are called VP underscore and then the name where VP stands for value pairs. So value pairs, common types, we have uh, these are, are the ones that actually ship by default in DSpace. There's no reason why you should keep all of them. So for example, if um, let's say the, these musical recordings, if they don't make sense in your uh, new repository if, or even worse, you don't want them at all. You don't want the user to select these. Why keep them? just delete this from the list there's no there's no problem but i would always recommend if you delete don't just zero out the cells but always go for an entire deletion of entire rows and entire columns if you don't do that you may see some strange error messages with null pointers or with with some advice saying there is somewhere a null cell or a null row and in excel it's quite hard to see where these null rows or null cells are so if you experience this I always recommend just start again from the latest submission form file that did work, make your changes in small increments, try to change something, upload your form again, see whether it works, makes another change to see where um, to avoid introducing any, any changes or deletions that, uh, that break the, the format. But I have the one here article, um, that's the one that I'm going to use for tie binding later. So I will, I will use that name article later for, uh, for that type bind. So I have traditional, uh, I have uh, page one, people select the type. And then I have page two where now, of course, because type has already been selected, I will want to delete the, the field here so that it's no longer used here in the form. And then I want to add my type bind column. It's very important to do it at the end um, at the end here, so I'll insert a column 
insert columns and then Excel as opposed to Google Docs makes it very weird how you how you move a column so I select the whole column this needs to f transform into a hand then I have to press shift and then I can yeah then I can shift this around or move this around ah no reason no idea why they make this so complicated so here the header that I use is type binding and I have a number of um, fields here where I would like to apply this uh, type bind. For example, the journal title, DC source journal title, I want to bind it to article. And here we had some uh, book titles for a book, actually for a chapter. So let's see what common types we have. If we have a, we have a type for a book chapter, we can call it book space chapter. I just have to make sure that these are exactly the same names. So uh, we have here, let's say we do this one with book chapter. Uh, then we have volume source, begin page, end page, number of pages. Maybe that makes sense for articles, books and book chapters. Um, probably you have, you have different opinions on this, but just, just to indicate that if you want to use it for multiple types, just add it with a comma. And I can do this one. Um, here we go. And the number of pages maybe only makes sense for a book in this example. Uh, that's it. That's it for this example. You can go as far as you want. Uh, I mean, you can you can invent your own types. You can you can bind them. You can also add this binding column to page three, which I haven't done here. But let's see if I made any mistakes. I just save my file. I go back here and I will just drop the file from my downloads, the place where I've saved it. Uh, I think I'm not sure if this drag and drop will work. It does. So I drop it on here and then I click upload. And whenever you get this screen, confirm upload, it, it means that the checks on null values and everything that they've already um, that they've already worked. So I will go ahead and accept these changes. And now I will uh, do some submissions to see whether it whether it worked. So I have a test collection here. Test collection admire. I submit a new item to this collection. I skip the import, so we're not going to import data from an external source. So this is another feature from Open Repository where we have a number of import sources where you can get metadata from. I skip the import. And I now have that first uh, selection step. Note that those recordings, musical recordings that we have, they don't appear anymore. But let's first go with an, a type that was not where we didn't add any uh, bindings for. So let's say we do video. So for video, we don't want to see uh, start page, end page, source, all of that stuff. We don't want to see the next step. Let's see if it worked. So indeed, those fields are no longer visible. One thing that is, you can consider it a feature or a bug, but usually when users select a type and they go ahead they know what they've selected. So going back here to previous is maybe not such a, a big use case, but whenever you want to go back, um, the check applies on the fields that are mandatory. So I have to go through here at the mandatory fields and then I can go back. But let's now switch to article, whether I dare see my item bound fields, my article bound fields, I see journal, the journal for this item, I see volume, issue, start page, end page. So I see that they are in place. We did configure that number of pages was only going to be visible for books. So let's just, as the final thing, do a double check on this book next. And indeed for books, I have my number of pages. So this was uploading your own submission form configuration, including type binding. I hope you found this useful. Let us know, uh, contact your at my representative or add issue tracker tickets if you need any uh, support for this. Thank you.